Thank you very much for making a date on the market, please. The Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, has expressed satisfaction in its strategic partner, McKinsey & Co. The international consulting firm was contracted to help generate revenue. According to the GRA, the country could meet its projected revenue of 45 billion CDs based on the work done by the consultant so far. Commissioner General of the GRA, Emmanuel Kofinti, however, debunked assertions that McKinsey and Co. has come to stay and cause a drain on the public purse. In the last quarter of the year, we did well because they were offering good advice and helping us with the kind of work that we were doing. Actually, especially for the, the costumes area, the collection up to the end of the third quarter weren't that good. And basically, again, the 2017, we were recording negative uh, growth. And so, uh, with the work of the McKinsey uh, be helping us, uh, we did relatively well. The costumes area improved. They say that in October they did like 5.3 percent growth. They moved to 16.3 percent growth in November, and they finally in uh, December they did 18.1 percent. We are heading to forward, and uh, we move to uh, ensuring that people who take goods on uh, transit and rest, they go to guarantee mechanisms and the rest. All those things have helped us. And so we have the belief that going to 2019, things should be far better than we experienced in 2018. Is it to suggest that McKinsey has come to stay or after the no, appointment? McKinsey hasn't come to stay. McKinsey has come to be give a temporary respite, helping build capacity and in the innovation and of idea sharing and the rest, and in the attitude that change that we have to do. McKinsey is only here transitionally, and they are not here forever, no. Now, passengers who wish to fly by air to the Upper West region have to wait a little bit longer because commercial flights for the routes are not being given permits yet. Upper West Regional Minister Alhaji Suleiman Al Hassan disclosed this to journalists in Wa uh, that two commercial flights were scheduled to start flying passengers from the Wa airport in November last year. However, they failed to get the needed permit to enable them to operate in Ghana. Joy News' Upper West correspondent Rafiq Salam reports. After giving out several dates on what commercial flights are to start operations at this airport, who turn out to be on tour, residents and the business class will however wait for the commercial flights to fly over their houses and shops. If not, any new date settled on will be regarded as one meant for the Marines. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wa. Still on the marketplace live, we apologize for the truncated version of that story. We'll bring you the longer version in the course of the bulletin. Now, the tariffs paid on gas supply for both domestic and industrial use may be going up from March this year. This is due to the decision by government to restrict gas supply from the Jubilee field as a result of the coming up on stream of gas from the ENI Sankofa field. Reacting to the ongoing gas pricing seminar in Accra, commercial director of the Ghana Gas Company, Georgia G called for an intervention in the regulation of pricing to cushion the company and consumers. My colleague Ebenezer Sabuti was there. He has joined me via phone for some more updates. Good afternoon, Eben. Welcome to the marketplace. Hi, Hi good afternoon, Mano. All right, so what is the justification for these higher tariffs that is being proposed? So the, the justification is that the EMI gas is a bit higher than what we are getting currently from Jubilee. And so the agreement the government signed with the uh, EMI partner I mean, the Italian company, we have to start transporting the gas from March this year, which means that the use of Jubilee gas will be restricted a bit. So if, for instance, we take 100% of Jubilee gas to do whatever we are supposed to do, it's going to be reduced to the barest minimum. We are going to make use of the EMI gas. The EMI partners also, I mean, says that the infrastructure in which they use to process the gas is a bit, I mean, higher, higher cost and that of the one being used at the Jubilee food. So this, some of these factors may indicate that there, there, there could be an increase in the pricing of the gas.
Ben, is it not a way of trying to you know, avoid the take or pay uh, kind of agreement with Sankofa because we, we, I mean, earlier on we heard that because the country has not put in place the right infrastructure, uh, we would have to either take or pay for the gas. Is that not a way of trying to utilize gas from Sankofa and then you know, by stopping gas flow from Jubilee? This question came up here, but unfortunately we couldn't get anybody from the Ministry of Energy to respond. But what they are saying is that Yes, I mean, we have contracts. We signed the agreement. Government understood this very well. So there's no, I mean, either there's going to be a take of pay. It's neither here nor there because it's an agreement which both of them understand. And if you remember very well, the, pro, uh, the agreement was renegotiated. It used to be somewhere around $9 I mean, uh, dollars, and it's been renegotiated down to about $7.5 per, uh, I mean, cubic feet of gas. So it's an agreement which has been signed by both parties. And we just have to obey by it, go by it. If there's a need for a renegotiation, government may have to intervene. And that's one of the call I mean the calls made by the officials from both PRA and the Ghana Gas Company. So will this current agreement cancel the, the payment we, we're doing to or we're making to um, ENI gas for failure to, to take um, the gas initially? There's no new agreement. It's the old agreement that they are going by it about it. What they tell us is that they all, all these are enshrined in the agreements which have been signed by both parties. So it, it's not um, like they are bringing in something new, but it's part of that. And they, when you look at the pricing, they didn't intentionally say the price from the ENI gas should be more than what Jubilee gas is offering us. But it just came in as, I mean, it, it just came in by, by nature that, yes, what you are getting from ENI is higher than what you are going to get from Jubilee. All right, so what would be the alternative uh, to the use of ENI gas? So the alternative would be, or some of them are proposing, I, I mean, I spoke with some uh, Dr. Mantiao of record, and he's proposing that there should be some mechanism to say that we have this institution giving the price, in fact, that if Jubilee Gas is offering this amount, whichever gas company or whichever entity that is giving us gas should also offer the same amount. There should be a relatively, I mean, a balanced pricing so that we don't have different, different prices. We have the same price from all the companies. Well, finally, before you go, does it mean that electricity tariffs may also go up? It, it could be so, because if you remember very well, we are using most of our gas for electricity power generation in the country. So this could mean that we are going to have, I mean, it will go up. But don't also forget that using lane gas is, I mean, a bit cheaper than using crude to produce electricity power. So this may not necessarily mean that it's going to be higher I mean, above the, 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 the common one we, that we normally pay. But it's just that it's going to be a bit higher than what we get from Jubilee. So. All right. Many thanks for your time, uh, Ebenezer Sabote, uh, bringing us up to speed with uh, the decision by government to stop gas flow from the Jubilee field and rather use gas from the Sankofa Jinyami field, which is obviously going to you know, lead to some tariff increases uh, come March this year. Moving on the marketplace, network marketing is gradually catching on in Ghana. However, many people have questioned the business model in a wake of fraud and Ponzi schemes. Our chief marketing officer of network giant uh, Max International, Larry Lowy, says it is a marketing strategy that rewards hard work. He spoke with Joy Business at the company's January kickoff event. So to those doubters out there, so just understand that the investment to uh, join with Max International is, is very, very minimal, particularly when you talk about, you know, companies such as this. You know, I've seen companies, especially in the U.S., where it's $1,000 U.S. or $2,000 U.S., you know, to join our company. Very often, it, it's free to join our company. And, you know, as we, you know, as Joe Wojtyki mentioned uh, the other day, you know, it's, it's a very minimal investment, and we do sell product as well. It's product first and foremost. It's not this bogus, false opportunity. So it's product first and foremost. But again, it's a very low investment to do that, uh, which is great. And then, as you can see here, you know, people, people appreciate our integrity. I think they appreciate the fact that we are legitimate, and they, they appreciate the fact that they can make money. This is about lifestyle, right? So you hear Max Lifestyles. For me, Max Lifestyle really means that, first and foremost, it's about the health. So inside and outside, your health, you, 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 you look good, you feel good. Right now, what does that mean, though, in terms of the business opportunity? It also means that we afford you a better lifestyle. 
And that doesn't mean, so to, yes, this is about, you know, looking good in fashion and so forth, but it's bigger than that, right? It's about what's that end benefit that we're trying to get to, and that end benefit is also, is always a better life, you know? So, so that could mean, yes, these people look great, they look fantastic, and that's great. So maybe over the last two or three years, they start making some money. But stripping that away, right, the present, you know, the gift is a, is a really great wrapper. But inside of that, it's, it's what's inside that's most important. In a bid to support poultry production, the National Food and Buffer Stock Company says it is ready to cut a deal to supply maize to poultry farmers in the country. Speaking to Joy Business, CEO of the National Food and Buffer Stock Company, Abdul Hanan Wahab, says despite some challenges faced in the past, his outfit is ready to sign an agreement with the Poultry Farmers Association. Over the years, concerns have been raised by poultry farmers across the country over the high cost of production because of inadequate supply of maize. As the Ministry for Food and Agriculture continues to consider possible solutions, the CEO for the National Food and Buffer Stock Company says they could enter into an agreement with poultry farmers to provide some relief. We are here. Some government subject institutions are in the process of having an MOU or a framework agreement with us. So we expect the poultry farmers association to also come and have the same arrangement, framework agreement with us that we need this quantity of yellow maize, white maize, supply it to us every month, every quarter, every year. So I am calling on them. We are, we are, we are ever ready to, uh, you know, help them boost their business because government has so much interest in, uh, in the poultry industry, especially now that we are coming to do this rearing for food and food and jobs. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamaklu. All right, so it's now time to take a look at some developments on the stock market. We've been joined on the line by a research analyst from Gold Coast Beta at Tubiga. We want to look at the performance of various equities on the market last week and how or what investors should be looking out for uh, within the particular week. Beta has joined us. Beta, good afternoon. Welcome to the market, please. Hello, Beta. All right, so we lost better on the line. Let's take a quick break here. We'll be right back after this. That's on the market, please, live. Now, Beta has uh, luckily joined me here in the studio to take a look at the performance of the market. Beta, you're welcome. Now, Thank quickly, you, what you, went on last week? Which stocks, I mean, performed creditably or very well last week, and which stocks are we expected to look at uh, this week? Okay. Um Thank you very much once again. Last week, the stock market did uh, quite well when it comes to the volumes of shares that we traded on the exchange, okay. as well as the value. But if you look at the equities that added up to investors' capital, we didn't see much equities as compared to the losers. And we can say that the total volumes of shares that traded last week on the stock market went up by 278.46%. And the value also went up by 517.37% to close at 2.12 million Ghana cities and sorry, 2.12 million shares and 3.38 million Ghana cities worth of equities trading on the stock market. If you're looking at the major indices on the Ghana Stock Exchange, the Composite Index and the Financial Stock Index, okay. the Composite Index depreciated or went down by 0.67% to close with a year-to-day decline of 0.62%, and the Financial Stock Index did not see any change. Uh, we saw it closing the same as it opened. However, we saw some equities lose on their weak open values. There are some financial equities lose on their weak open values okay. on the stock market. ETI, Echo Bank. GCB lost some shares. Carl Bank also lost some value on the market. Mm. We also saw BOPP leading the laggards list. That was a top loser on the market. It was a top 
loser on the stock market. We had Ecobank ETI and MTN Ghana also lost on the stock market. Wow, how is MTN performing? Now? Well, I actually wanted to take you through how the stock has been in the last 10 trading days on the market. And MTN, surprisingly, though it trades on the market, we haven't seen any like significant price changes okay. on the exchange in the last 10 trading days. It actually moved last week, which was the 17th. Um, mm. Yeah, within a week, that was on the okay. 17th of this month, that was when we saw the equity going down by one peso to close at 78 pesos per share after trading 25,000 shares on the market. Mm -hmm. And in the last 10 days, last week says there was a day that I actually traded the highest volume. Now, latter part of last year, you realize that MTN, we could see it trading over a million shares. We see it leading in terms of the volumes of shares that will be traded on the market. But this year has not been the same. Okay. And uh, we can say the 17th was the highest volumes of shares that was traded in the equity on the stock market. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at its performance, in the last week it's gone down by 1.27%. That was the margin by which it depreciated. And that's actually its year to date loss. Because mm -hmm. this year, the past 10 days, we haven't seen any changes in MTN. And in the last four weeks, we haven't seen any changes. The last three months, MTN has lost 14.29%. And it's lost 4% in the last six months, and it's gained 4% in the last Would one year. Sorry, it's gained 4% in the last six months, and okay. also gained 4% in the last one year. So, so that's how... this introduction, will you describe it as not being too impressive? Well, the performance of MTN on the stock market has been very impressive. That okay. I would not say it's not. Mm -hmm. It's been very impressive. And you realize that it actually contributed to some positive performance on the mm -hmm. Ghana Stock Exchange as a whole. Because the worth of the market is quite significant. 9.59 um, billion Ghana cities with 12.29 billion shares outstanding is, right. is quite a significant one. And it's, it's actually helped uh, the Ghana Stock Exchange last year. Okay. Let me now, say so that. What equities should investors be looking at this week? Well, this week we are not expecting the market to be very, very active as we usually see. Mm -hmm. And um, volumes are not expected to be quite significant as we saw for last week. And we are expecting gold to actually lose. Oh, it's probably that we're going to see some changes in the price of gold on the stock market. But mm -hmm. there's a high possibility that the share price of gold is going to go down. And the reason being that the offer side, that if you look at the stock market, we have the offer and then the bid side. The offer side outweighs that of the the bid side. So a lot of people are willing to offload their shares. So uh, it's going to actually have that impact on the share price of gold on the stock market. All right, now, I want to put this question out to you. I mean, the men's gold crisis, is it mm. having any effect on the stock market? Because I know a lot of investors have, you know, diverted their funds into purchase of men's gold, which okay. is not helpful. Let me say that people that are investing in men's gold, or people that invested yeah. in men's gold, okay, are not clients that are actually looking out for long-term returns. Okay. They are clients that are looking out for short-term returns. returns, yes. So you look at a client investing for a period of three months, six months, probably a year maximum, so that they can make regular interest. And if you listen to most of them, they were getting monthly interest payments and all that. So these are not clients that will be looking out for the equity market. Mm -hmm. And if you, we have um, two, like, we have the long term, we have the medium term, and we have mm -hmm. the short term. And we know the equity market is a long term investment scheme that you go into because within the short term, you can make some good returns. But such clients will not be taking up such risk to right. invest in um, the stock market. But generally, we can say that the financial sector has been a bit down. Confidence in the market is a bit low. Yeah. And we expect that things actually move up. It's not going to be very fast, but we should expect some All right, many thanks for your time. Beth, time. Uh, to you guys, a research analyst from Gold Coast. She's been updating us about the performance of the stock market for last week and what investors should be looking at this week. And on that note, to wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace, many thanks for your time. My name is Imano Abuachi. If you join me again, same time tomorrow. Have a good afternoon.